So I am really, really happy to be back with my friends Bryce and Medina today. And David will be joining us, but it's five o'clock in the morning where he is. So as soon as he gets up and switches his computer on, <laughs> poor David will be joining us. So how are you doing, ladies? How are you doing, Medina? Oh, excellent. Really, really good. Um, got rid of a big uh, issue last week that was hanging over, which is uh, sort of the dark energy is trying to come in and um suppress my voice so that that's gone yay <laughs> yay and um so other you know wonderful things that are happening i want to talk about today are the 222 portal that we're going through today in australia it's the second of the second you know to uh 22 so this is huge and and so i'm feeling the energies of that and that that's um very positive australia yeah, there's lots of on a sec. Here's David. Yeah. Sorry, we'll oh. just get David coming and join us because now he's... Excellent. Hi, David. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi, David. We just started, if that's all right. Yeah, that's cool. We just started a few minutes ago, but you haven't missed anything much at all. Oh, well, far, before we dive into that, Medina, we'll just introduce, see how the others are getting on. And then we've got lots of topics to discuss today. That will definitely be on the list. How, anyway, well done, David. Sterling effort, five o'clock in the morning. I'm impressed. <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Good, good, good. David, every time I film with tomorrow, it's usually 5 a.m. my time, but I'm used to getting up super early. But that is definitely. Good job. <laughs> definitely, it's it's hard yeah. to do that. So, good morning. <laughs> so, yeah, good morning. Good morning for, to all of you. Oh, good, good morning, everyone. And good morning, good evening. And here it's nine o'clock at night. Here it's very dark. We've already had lots of wolves flying around, haven't we, Bryce? So, yes. well, we've got some really exciting <laughs> things to talk about today. So, we'll we'll each sort of go around the table and kick it off because i know you've got some good things to chat about as well david and bryce but medina you were just talking about the portal do you want to tell us a bit about that because in australia you're already on the second of the second 22 exactly yes yes so this is huge it's a huge uh energy that's coming in for an opening of the aquarian gateway and these frequencies of light will assist in accelerating humanity's awakening process so this is huge um and the 222 number is the number that pulsates the impetus of the power on all planes and the ability to change the course of history yay so this is uh an energy that's going to shift us in in a direction that we're, we're co-creating so really it's so important to stay focused on the light and to hold um love-based patterns that we want to co-create because this is a huge energy for co-creating what we want to bring in um, so on the 2nd of uh, the february this is the beginning of this gateway and it will amplify um, that 222 number 1000 fold because it's five times two but then what happens is the gateway continues to the 22nd of the second and then it will be six twos so the amplification of those six twos will mean that it is um, amplified 10,000 fold, that 222 number. A again, you can imagine the, um, the frequency or the energy of that frequency um, in, the, in our field. And, and that's a very powerful co-creation, obviously. Um, and that 22nd will complete the passageway through that Aquarian gateway. So th this is a very powerful time for co-creation of the, of the um, planet that we all want to create. And on top of that, the 222 lunar year, which many people celebrate, is the year of the tiger, symbolising rebirth and reinvigoration. So it's, it's a very exciting time when you look at it that way. And I think the, the, the way that we see the world at the moment, you know, that obviously at this 3D matrix level, you know, it's looking very uh, complicated at times. It can look very, um, you know, challenging and dark. But when, when you bring all these aspects into it, I think it's really important to, to realise that there's a lot of higher things going on that are in play that are actually supporting us to co-create the reality that we want. God, that fits in so well with what you and I were talking about when we were having our pre-record chat, Bryce, doesn't it? Because we both we were both saying, um, David and Medina, that Bryce and I were talking about that we're really sort of personally for us two, we've we've got to the end of these sort of 
um, talking about they've done this to us, we've been programmed, we've been this, and very much moving through the grief cycle into the acceptance stage of, okay, that's where we're at, that would be, now what are we going to do about it? So that fits perfectly with that energy, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And I think we forget that these other things are going on as well. These higher metaphysical things are in play that are really supporting us. Because if we focus too much on that 3D, um, it does look like we've got, you know, a lot against us sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm How do you feel about that? Oh, carry on, Bryce. No, I was about to say, I've noticed that my viewers have noticed that like orbs are constantly going around me now. I've seen it on Catherine's videos. I've seen it, like you can see it, that that metaphysical starting to come into more of a reality where the veil is is dropping because we are going from a third density, which is a, the physical density. I'm not talking about the consciousness at this point. I'm talking about that's a heavy density to be in. And now we're going up to fourth density. And so it's going to get lighter and it's going to be a little bit more um, clearer to see beyond the veil. And, um, and, and one thing that's exciting for me moving past, cause there is, I mean, Catherine and I were talking about this. There is a grieving process you go, go through when you're awakening. There's always a black pill that goes with the red pill, but I'm tired of the grieving process. I want to, I want to move into that new reality because the metaphysical, the spiritual that I've been experiencing, I've always had spiritual stuff happening to me since I was a kid, but as of late, the intensification of that, it's like, that's more real to me now than the BS that we've been living that I've been living through for the past 38 years. That's mm. more real now. And it feels yeah. better. It feels more loving. It feels more um, exciting. It feels yeah. like we're like more purposeful. And, and that's what I want to focus on now is like, yeah, that story they gave us, it was crap. But guess what? The real story is really cool. And it's yeah. awesome. And, and we're a part of it. We're a part of that. So what do you think, David? Uh, I, I just know that like, it's, a, it's a bit of a challenging one because you do see a lot in the 3D that's happening right now. I mean, in terms of, in terms of stuff that's happening here, uh, Medina's probably seen a lot of it as well. Maybe you guys have too. So many people are being served with, no, like the police are being served and the politicians are being served and it's really great. And there's loads of people descending on Parliament House in Canberra and that's happening all of this week and it's been happening in a few days. From the from a spiritual perspective, though, um, I I kind of I can tell that people are waking up rapidly. I can tell that so many things. You know, you know how the, the Matrix cipher wants to go back to sleep, and there are many people like that too. But there's definitely a big awakening happening in in on so many levels. But but it, like it like you guys said, it's now time for action. Like it really is time for action because we can't really keep playing victim the entire time uh, and saying that this is happening, this isn't happening because there's a lot happening. And our, our, uh, our supply chain is literally hanging by a thread here. Mm. Like I heard something, something crazy last night. I don't know if it's true, but I could see, I could see how it would be true. Like this trucking company, who, this guy who's been, works with one of the major tr trucking companies, he, he was like, by the end of this week or early next week, we will have no trucks bringing any food into the state at all. And, and uh, that you know that really concerned me. Uh, so it, I I just I just <laughs> hope there's some sort of divine intervention that's gonna that's gonna come in. I mean I'm I'm prepared a little bit. Could always be more prepared for sure. But you know uh, I just don't know what's gonna happen to the masses. You know. In you know that respect. Tamara told me on my last episode with her, and I thought this was such a good perspective. And be careful about how I say this. So we are all across the world. We're experiencing shortages. I mean, we see I, I'm in the best situation living in Atlanta, Georgia, than all, all four of us, for sure. For sure. I'm in a conservative state. There's none of this. It's it's. But we are seeing uh, shortages in our grocery. You go to the grocery store, they're empty shelves for sure. Um, and something that Tamara brought up was that in this process of like, de we'll just say detoxing the the dirty off of the off of the planet we have to also look at our food supply mm. and we know that our food supply is not like i know oh, i know all four of us are probably people that i know i for catherine i've talked about this a lot i very careful about what i eat i really look at but we're still bringing in stuff that we can't because it's out of, it's been out of our control so what's happening um again i'm trying to paraphrase it guys that episode is on rumble for a reason because it's very potent um is a lot of these big corporations that produce 
food around the world have not been using the best things in our food. And so some of what we're seeing on the outside is also the uh, good guys, if you will, taking out that from our circulation in order to then replenish it with stuff that's actually good for humanity. Does that make sense? That yes, I, I watched that video. That was a great video you did with her. And I got two thirds of the way through and the video stopped and I couldn't watch anymore. <laughs> I mean, what happened? It's reloaded now and the whole thing works now. So nice try, Satan, but we got it going. So <laughs> it's that really interesting stage, isn't it? What you were both just saying there is, is like, I completely agree. There's so much of our supply chain that needs to go, you know, reliance on buying cheap stuff that's made by slave labor, often by little people in yeah. horrendous conditions that we don't need that's feeding this consumerism. We know that a lot of our food is and animals' food, don't even get me started on that, you know, is, is produced in atrocious conditions using awful stuff. It's not real food, it's fake food. But equally, we're not set up. So where I am, I live in a lovely countryfied area and I was on my lovely dog walk, my favorite thing to do, I took the ponies up to the top field and, you know, how idyllic is my life and then went out for a two hour dog walk. And I was just thinking, God, this is just, you know, people talk about this is the most stressful time in history. I was saying this to Bryce early and I'm like, look at the Middle Ages. I would have been too old. I wouldn't be alive anymore because I'm well over that, <laughs> you know, what the average age was. Most of us would have had our head cuts off or we'd be so poor that we couldn't eat. You know, the stress that humanity has gone through for centuries. And that's OK, even if a lot of our history isn't real. Mm -hmm. We're still tired of A lot of the past life regressions people have done, uh, some of that is real. And you're like, it's just been horrific area after horrific area after horrific area. And I was thinking, I'm looking at my life now. My, I am so blessed. You know, I've got running water. I've got f heat. I've got food in the cupboards at the moment. Um, you know, I've got, I live in this beautiful place. And then I go into the city for a day at the weekend and all hell breaks loose. But I, that's why I've never, I've chosen, I cannot live in a city because it's beyond me. And now I know everyone's different and we're all meant to be unique. But I'm like, why would anyone choose to put themselves there? Why would, why would any human choose to live in a city? Now, that's just my perspective. I've got friends that come to where I live and like, well, oh, that's creepy out here on your own. How could you live there? But I suppose the point I'm trying to put is two points. Going back to the food shortage issue is I agree, we're definitely, with what you and Tamara are saying, Bryce, we're definitely moving in the right direction, but how do we bridge that gap? Because, like, where I am here, we've got plenty of countryside to grow your own food, but no one's doing it because they're all working in London all day. <laughs> you know, they're all, mm. <laughs> they're all doing the corporate jobs. And then, so there's this awkward transition where this is going to stop before that one's ready. Does that make sense? And I think yeah. the humanity is going to shine, though. Because I remember Prime Minister saying this once, because I said to Prime <clears throat> a long time ago on a show, you know, of course, we've been thinking the end was near for two years now. And I said to him, I was like, but what about all the people who are angry? And Prime said, don't forget about the power of the love of God. Mm. And with the whole food sort of thing, like I have a pantry full of rice and beans right now, full of it. And so if something were to happen where we couldn't get to the grocery store, I have enough food where I can make sure my neighbors were okay. We might not be eating pretty for a couple of months, might not be gourmet, but there's enough for everybody to have enough to survive. You but know? Well, the dog can't eat that. No, the, well. <laughs> so, do yeah. so much to do. Wait, wait, I think we could get Robbie sorted. Robbie can hunt, let me tell you. He's a street dog, he knows how to hunt. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I think there's the importance of co-creating, you know, the, the reality that you want, you know, in, in every single way, not, not just with food, but in every way. I mean, I just got myself a space drum. I don't know if you can see behind me. It's it's from France and it's absolutely beautiful. It's like raindrops. <laughs> when you hit it, it sounds like raindrops. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to co-create it within my own environment, a beautiful um, space that that will take me through this period. Um, and if we all do that, I think that can make a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, see, I've already got that. I mean, I'm so happy in mind that I then feel awful and people get really cross with me when I say that on videos. But we've been preparing this for ages. We didn't know it was going to be this, but we've all been doing this work for so long that we've sort of created environments for ourselves, which are 
pretty nice, really, to different degrees, I'm sure. But and if you're holding a high frequency, you'll just actually magnetize that in any way. You know, it will just form around you. You know, so it's all about the, the frequency that you're holding and the energy that you're holding as well. And it's again, it gets time for humanity to shine. I think you look at all these. I mean, look, look at the Underground Railroad. Look at all the times where he met, where there's been so much friction and humanity, and the majority of people shine. They come out and they start helping each other. You know, in an emergency situation, nobody cares what your political affiliation is, what your race is, what your gender is. They just want to help you. You know, even in after Canada, the, yeah, yeah, exactly they're doing that thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think if that if that were to happen, where there was like a massive shortage of, of food. I think that we're going to see humanity rise up and people, yeah, completely. Numbers, you know, mm -hmm. and not caring about this anymore because they want to make sure, you know, I think I believe most people, most people genuinely don't want to hurt you and genuinely will help you. I, I don't know. You know, if you hear a child, I don't know one person, if they, if they heard a child screaming, wouldn't look around to see what they could do to help, you know? And I do think that will happen. I think that has happened in history is that neighbors will open the door to neighbors and give food to neighbors, give food to the dogs, to the animals to make sure that, um, that everyone's taken care of that, that until we are able to get over that hump of, um, you know, yeah, and we have that, that, that gift of cooking has been kind of stripped from us over the past, what, 50, 60 years of people now eating fast food and ready made foods and stuff. But I think we'll, we'll pull through it. If, if we have to go through something like that, I think, I think, I, I believe humanity will, will get, we might be really skinny when we get done, because we won't be eating as much as we normally do. But, but well, well, there won't be the same levels of obesity. So that's <laughs> good. We'll just fix that problem right away. So... <laughs> what do you think about that, David? I think some people, given the uh, the uh, obesity epidemic worldwide, some people won't need to eat for a few months and probably need to uh, will be able to will be okay to live off their fat stores. But old jokes aside, I think uh, going back to what you said about being prepared and preparing for this this kind of period without really knowing it, I, I completely agree with that. I was talking to a friend a couple of days ago, and and he said. What's the deal over there? Are you, uh, are you still fighting? Because I caught up with him back in 2020. He lives in Victoria. He came over for, for some work. And we had a bit of a chat about this was obviously very fresh at that time. Was, mm. And he's like, man, I thought, he, he's, are you still fighting? Have you got the thing yet? And I was like, no, I haven't got it. Uh, even though they've just stepped up the, the, you can't really do anything now here. I mean, you can't go to the bottle shop. You can't do, it's stupid. You can actually walk into the bottle shop and do your shopping. But then when you get to the checkout, they won't, serve, they won't serve you. So, so you've already had you've already had the potential to spread the damn thing all over the place. But they've, oh, it's so stupid. But, and uh, the other thing, Dave, too, that, that you can't. Uh, it's just come out the court system, the legal system. You can't go into a court anymore unless you've got one of these. Um, so they're really. basically they can only have the one narrative there, can't they? Because if everyone who's got one of these will, has that perspective, you know. Um, it's it's really trying to um, change change the narrative within that structure. But doesn't that also yeah. mean you and David can do what you like and they can't drag you into court? Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> How are they going to try you? You're not going to be allowed. I never thought of that. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> we have but free anyway, reign. <laughs> what I was what I was going to say was my my friend goes. He said, "Are you still fighting? Are you are you?" Uh, holding strong and I said yeah I'm not, I'm not getting it he goes man I thought I thought that after a little bit of pressure like if they took away I don't know whatever a bunch of things I thought you would have cracked ages ago and and it and it kind of occurred to me that a he didn't really know who I was really but b <laughs> uh and maybe I'm a lot stronger than than he thought but uh it was it wasn't really about that it was about kind of for better or worse I'd kind of removed myself from society in many ways, you know, like I wasn't working a normal job uh, in, in, a, in an office. I didn't really go out anymore. I didn't really, the only thing I really needed from society, apart from a gym, which can easily be worked around, uh, was, this, was the supermarket. And, yeah. I let, and it, you know, given that I had like certain electronics that I kind of needed, like, but if I, if I had all of that prior to this, then I did, only needed to go to the supermarket. And, and I was talking to a friend about it and he goes, I said, you know what? I kind of removed myself from society a long time ago. And he goes, is that a good thing? And I said, well, maybe not necessarily a good thing on the surface, but it's a great thing when you think deeper, because if you, if you remove yourself from everything 
And it's the mindset of, it's the, the mentality of removing yourself from not caring what anybody thinks, not, not uh, being reliant on going to a restaurant. Like I know people that really want to take the thing just so they can go to a restaurant and they don't even go that often, you know? And, and I'm like, well, because I removed myself, society has nothing that I want, really. Mm. You know, and, and the average, the average person isn't healthy, wealthy or wise. Why would I want to be around those kinds of people, you know? Mm. I think that if you've taken yourself out of that 3D matrix, you're actually going to be able to um, function better within this whole transition period that's happening. And I notice that people that have done that actually are faring much better on the whole because they're yeah. not ta they're not sort of um, dependent on, on everything within the system. And, and, and I think that's, that's a great thing. I think that helps this process of transition. And, um, yeah, I, I think that's good. It's, it comes to P, it comes back to, I mean, every single one of us is here on our own unique journey and we've all got um, certain lessons that we're meant to learn in this life. Sometimes I'm a bit slow, <laughs> but I get there eventually. So, you know, everyone watching this is going to be in a completely different situation. But what, what it's really hit home to me personally, on a personal level, is it's almost like I can see now why I've made all these decisions that didn't necessarily make sense or everyone else told me they didn't make sense at the time. Now, hindsight's a sort of wonderful thing. And obviously, I'm at a stage, a later stage of my life, whereas people watching this who are much younger, you know, they, they haven't had the chances necessarily to make certain choices yet. But their move, their energy that they've been born with is completely different to what I was born into. So you can look at... You can make as many excuses as you like, but when you look back and you can see, I can now see exactly why, like you were saying, really, David, why I choose to take myself out of those situations. So I chose a long while ago to take myself out of the corporate situation, and that was a very conscious decision. And now I'm so grateful I have for all the reasons that you've just expressed. So these decisions, what we make, and we've all spoken quite a lot before about you often you get quite a lot of resistance from external people because it's not what they expect you to do. But when you follow your heart and do them, then nine times out of 10, you're going to get all oh, tick. I didn't realize why that was really good, but it was well done sort of thing. Uh, absolutely. I, I, you know, my life um, before all this happened, I was not living, never have I lived a conventional life. Like I was supposed to as a white Southern woman. Um, I've spent most of my adult life going back and forth to India, spending months and months there at a time. It's not conventional. And um, it's definitely changed the way I've lived my life. And it's so funny. And I think, I don't know if we've talked, spoken about this, Catherine, but um, I know I've spoken about it with Taylor that, you know, part of any spiritual practice is learning how to see the truth through the illusion, because everything really is an illusion. If you get deeper into that, that's the truth of who you are as an eternal spirit. But there's also a sense of seeing the truth in the world. And one thing I've noticed is uh, looking back on all my time traveling to India, the crap I've been through in my own practice, my diet and of the soul, I was able to see this for what it was from the very beginning. And so mm -hmm. looking back, I mean, hindsight is 2020 looking back, all these decisions I had made, which my parents might not have been happy about society might not have been happy about really prepared me for this moment sitting here for me. February 1, 2022, talking to you guys, because I was able to see the truth of the illusion. And it became so much more what was happening, what we we're preparing for was so much more than just this secular idea of success, which really is corporations, work, keeping up with the Jones, we had tapped into something more than that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to say that from an ego type perspective, mm -hmm. but tell I let me my my birthday is this Friday, and I always panic about I always have like these like massive emotional breakdowns before a birthday ever since I turned 27, which I'll be 39. So that was a long time ago, but that I've had this like stress and it, and it usually came down to this idea of like all the expectation that had been put on me for my whole life of where I was supposed to be in, in the society I come from and that I'm not. And even though I could, I could never go there. I could never be a part of that. That never was a, a, attracted to me. There was this sense of like, Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Because I'm doing something that nobody else has done before. Um, but in the same time, this is the first birthday coming up where I actually am feeling really relaxed because I feel like there's a purpose. There's, there's been something, something deeper there. Does that make sense? And 
Does that make yes. sense? Yes. Yeah, yes. Totally. My, partner, my partner has his birthday on the Thursday, the day before. So. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. But, but I love the quote, if you can see through the illusion, you are part of the solution. And um, I've got that on my desktop because I think that's really powerful. And, uh, yeah, so... But, but I think the illusion is, is great because when, when you know that you're in the illusion, then um, it gives you a sense of motivation to move forward and do something about it. Um, and um, a, a friends, a lot of people actually online lately have been talking about we're in a simulation. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother level again. But, um, you know, that's a bit much of a mind warp for me at the moment to go there. It's a reality <laughs> show for the aliens. Come on. This is like Earth 2012. <laughs> Where are we out? We're just <laughs> 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 I know. <laughs> I know. Well, it's funny because there's a lot of spiritual communities where like I like I now I'm, I'm disgusted when I see like a yoga shala where they're requiring this or this like mm -hmm. I'm disgusted by that. Like that disgusts yeah. me. Like what have you been doing all these years? Gymnastics? Obviously, mm. you, you don't understand liberation, which is the whole point of this freaking practice is liberation. If you're not, it's like, um, do you guys know that uh, creator JP Spears? Is that his name? JP Spears. Yeah. But uh, this this yoga magazine here, Elephant, I think it was Elephant Journal, I think, I'm not 100% sure, wrote like a hit piece on him because he's like like us. And I was out walking the dog the other day and I was like, that's so funny that a yoga magazine would write a hit piece on someone preaching liberation. Yeah. It's, it's, about. yeah. The, price the, eternal, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. I love that. <laughs> Quite, lots of quotes today. Okay, I'll rest at some point. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things I've learned, and it's been really brought to, um, to front with the Joe Rogan thing. Oh, I saw the biggest thing before because I just shared on my Telegram um, about how they've had a new study from Japan showing that the horse dewormer, I won't mention the word, actually does work, <laughs> which yep. we all knew all along. Got some, yeah. So I just shared it. <laughs> And then Joe Rogan shared it, not via me, unfortunately. Um, and he's got absolutely slated on Spotify again for spreading misinformation. It's like this is a scientific study mm -hmm. done by a really serious institute in Japan. It's not misinformation at all. It's just not the information you've done. But the whole truckers thing um, and the Joe Rogan thing has really made me take a big look at myself because... I've said all the way through this that I, as an individual, I, as an individual, am anti all of them for humans, actually, because I've been studying it for 20 years and I've never found one for humans that works. The, I'm still looking into this very little study on some of the other ones. So, like, you know, Bryce and I have got rescue dogs from places abroad where a lot of the diseases like distemper are really rife and we don't have rabies in the UK and things like this. So that, that I'm still researching, so I can't give a firm opinion on that. And then everyone's coming out saying, I'm not anti-e-e-e. -E -E. And I was thinking, well, well, you are because you said all this stuff here. Why don't you just say it? But what I mean is when I mean I'm anti this, I mean for me, not for anyone else making an informed decision. And so I realized it's all terminology and how people choose to perceive that. So I am, for me, that anti this, but I'm, I haven't got a problem if a consenting adult chooses to make a choice. Like, like people who volunteer themselves for medical trials, I really admire them. Good. If you consciously choose to volunteer yourself for a medical trial, I'd far rather they did that than tested on animals. But I object to them doing medical trials on people that haven't consented. That's a completely different point. And I certainly project yeah. to them doing, you know, medical trials on animals that absolutely have not consented. And There's so much information. There's so much disinformation in the whole, you know, um, the pharmaceutical area that people can't make informed choices anyway. Exactly. Because they don't, they don't have the full range of knowledge that they need to make proper decisions. And, um, you know, really it's just the truth is so inverted when it comes to these areas. So that's why the whole system has to actually um, be, um, you know, uh, dissolved so that we can create, create a whole new structure because, the way it's set up at the minute. I mean, you look at the, the media system. My gosh, 
The global news is owned by Chorus Entertainment. Chorus Entertainment is owned by Shaw Corporation. Shaw Corporation is owned by Rogers Media. Rogers Media is owned by the Vanguard Group. Vanguard Group owns Pfizer, Moderna, Merck, Johnson & Johnson. I mean, you know, Vanguard Group also owns Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you know. They have everything. Like, there's there's no way that we can get information. Um, Every out multinational. In, yeah, exactly. Out in, in the sources that are in front of us that gives us any, any sort of opinion that is um, um, informed or balanced. I know, and you had some good points about that, David, when we were speaking to each other for our messenger and things about the whole concept of intelligence, education, informed choice, you know, they, you had some really good points to bring up about that. Yeah, <laughs> intelligence is one of those funny topics that everybody has their definition, but typically the, the societal definition of intelligence, which is basically just academia, right? And it, it comes up often because intelligence is always the marker, isn't it? It's always like, oh, that person's not that smart, or that person's really smart, or whatever. And, and I, I kind of you know, over the, over the last few years, I've been thinking like, what is the real definition of intelligence? Because there could be so many definitions. You know, if your definition of intelligence is basically how well someone can do at school, then it's so narrow-minded. Like you could take uh, the, 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 the idea that somebody is really, really good at say woodwork or something. That's a different level of intelligence altogether, but that's not really, but who cares about that, you know, in society really, it's all about how well you can, you can, you know, quote unquote, or memorize things. But I had a, a mentor of mine I was speaking to recently, and he said his, his definition of intelligence was the ability for someone to design their life in a way that they want, but also create a plan and execute it and successfully, which I thought was pretty cool, but also, you know, maybe a bit long-winded, but I watched this video just a couple of days ago. You know, when you, you, you see videos, it had nothing to do with intelligence whatsoever, but the woman in, in the video said, Intelligence isn't your brain. Intelligence is your mind and the power behind it. And, and that was like one of the biggest things I took from that video, which I think is an amazing definition because it's universal. It's one of the things that we all have. People may be born with a good memory or a good, you know, uh, elite athletic ability or whatever, any, any number of skills, but the, the mind is the one thing that we all have. It's a level playing field. And I think that's, that's why it's important because we, we need to have how can you how can you say that someone is quote unquote unintelligent when just because they have a good you know or you know because they have a good memory or whatever they don't have a good memory for that thing that they're trying to memorize you know it has to be a level playing field i guess i i look at it in terms of consciousness more than intelligence but it's sort of the same thing but it's another way of looking at it but um sort of uh, different consciousness creates different different um experiences and um intelligence to me is, is a bit more about the, the the mental body the mind the cerebral whereas consciousness is more to do with maybe the soul and and so that's how i sort of look at things i guess and I was listening, it was funny because you we were messaging each other about that, David. And then at the same time, I was listening because I'm I'm so into the animal communication. And I was listening to this brilliant video. And one of this it was so lovely to see because it was this top um behaviorist. And I, I did biology and animal behavior, and virtually everything I learned about animal behavior in university I now know is completely wrong because we were always told not to. Um, put human emotions on animals and now that's been disproved and we were told that what separates humans from the rest of the animal kingdom was the ability to think ahead use tools well that's been disproven because we now know there's loads of animals that can use tools and we know that there's loads of animals that can plan ahead and problem solve and everything and it was so beautiful to see this professor I wish I could find the link again now but that was so set on the fact that there was such a huge difference between humans and animals. And then he said, but we've now crossed off everything on the list that was the definition of the difference between humans and other animals. And now we do all have to accept that we are just another form of animal. Because look at the whale's intelligence, look at the cheetahs, the thing, you, are, you need a different type of awareness, consciousness, thought processes. It's, it's no good me being a human and um thinking like a horse unless i'm interacting with my horses because i don't live like a horse well i do actually but okay not a good example but do, you know it's so relative and you're so right david i mean 
look at what's happened now. I mean, it's it's been so obvious this last two years because everyone has pointed out that supposedly really intelligent people have got no common sense. And isn't that that? Well, but do we mean by common sense that actually can't tune in to what's really happening? Because all these hugely um, successful professors and scientists and lawyers who were respected and won Nobel Prizes and all sorts of awards, as soon as they've gone across the narrative, now all of that has been slated and now suddenly they're a nobody. Just shows how ridiculous it is, doesn't it? It's a completely man-made label. Yeah. Animals right. would see through it, I reckon. <laughs> you know, they, they see the truth. <laughs> yeah. We can all learn from them right now. I've got a new alarm clock. My, 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 my dog jumps on my arm and taps me every morning to get up. <laughs> so that's my new alarm clock. <laughs> my, my dog, I'll tell you funny, he... Uh, He's a, again, he's a rescue. Uh, he was rescued as a puppy from India. So he, he doesn't have the street smarts that a lot of the adult dogs we've rescued. He doesn't know what a car is. But he, you know, when you ki I, I kiss him all the time. I just, I kiss him. And, you know, when we think of dogs kissing, we think of licking. But Ravi will actually take his snout and push it into you and then pull back. And that's him kissing you. So, like, all through the night, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I get this boop right on my face <laughs> you sit there looking at me. so yes but back to the intelligence thing one thing i because one of the things i've been doing on my channel that i've been loving doing is going through the missing books of the bible because there's so much more to that story the uh, more psychedelic metaphysical stuff and the real story of of yashua or jesus and and of course the magdalene as well because she was the counterpart and in the original uh, Gospels, the original theology behind um, this new Christ consciousness at the time was this big thing. People have heard the Gnostics are Gnosis versus Edo. This is Greek words. Gnosis was inner knowing. Edo was outer knowing. So EDO is everything that involves an educational system, reading a book. It's idiot. Yeah. <laughs> it's reading the mind. But the Gnosis, that is something that no one can teach you. It's an inner, in the Yoga Sutras, it's called Prativa. It's a flash of illumination. You know, it's the spark of consciousness. And I do think that that, in my opinion, that flash of consciousness, that spark of illumination, that gnosis, that to me is the highest level of intelligence. And that's, that's something we're all born with. You know, like you look at a child, a small child who doesn't even know how to go to the bathroom by themselves. And they know what God is. They know what source is. They see the angels. They don't need anybody to tell them that, that they were created for a reason. They have that connection to the divine. And then something happens along the way where that gets disrupted. Are, are we being told we're crazy or, you know, you know, don't trust your gut, you know, better to learn the books, you know? And so I think, and I do think, cause I know Catherine, you brought up a lot of good points about we need people who are good at the intellectual stuff. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the future we can find in the, in the new earth we can find a place where both the gnosis and the edo have their correct balance if that makes sense i think undoing the programming is such a big point to do with what you're talking about you know the programming we get as adults all the way through life to create us to, to fit into the program that they want and and so um going back to that state of the inner child and and, and that purity and that um clarity that that we actually um lose as as we grow within this 3d matrix um reality um so i think just undoing all that programming is, is part of what we need to do to get to a better place and to accept everyone's gifts because you know i always use this scenario because everyone in my house loves football is you've got to have your goalkeeper your defenders your midfields your strikers the whole point is we need the carpenters we we do need surgeons we do need um uh Parker. you know car mechanics we do need cooks we do need um vets for certain things i mean I've, i i do loads of holistic therapies but i still have to have a vet at times you know so i think it, it, it's appreciating the different stages but not putting a judgment and a level on top of them you know but and that's where i think I'm so excited to see where it goes forward. I am really, really excited. I mean, look at what's happening now this last year. Never before, I think, have manual workers been so appreciated because everyone's now thinking, 
it's no good me being an actuary or an accountant or a bank manager or an investment banker. You know, I need a, a trucker, I need a mechanic, I need a carpenter, I need I need the practical skills. I'm afraid you guys, <laughs> you're not as a, it's, people are really looking at things differently, don't you think, and realising that so many people I know are, are moving out to the country or, or changing their lifestyle or are saying now, actually, I know we're allowed into the office, but I'm not commuting up to London every day again, like I used to, leaving at five o'clock in the morning and getting home at eight o'clock at night. Where I've, I've got used to seeing my family now and going for a jog at lunchtime. I'm not going back to that. Yeah. What's, what's that lead? life? So Alan Watts is, Alan Watts is my favorite um, mm -hmm people that brought really brought Eastern philosophy to the forefront, to the Western world. And it was one thing, you know, people was like, what's the point of life? What's the point of life? And he used to say, the point of life is to be alive, mm. be alive, you know, and that's, that's, that, 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 yeah, you're right. Cause I know like my parents live outside of Atlanta and here in Atlanta, we have uh, the MARTA system, which is like our subway, but it only goes in like two directions. No one really takes it. Trust me. It's hot as balls in the summertime. You do not want to be six feet under the ground <laughs> here in the summertime. But um, but everybody drives. Like, this is a driving city. You have to drive. And traffic is unbelievable. And I had a friend growing up outside of Atlanta. He would literally spend, like, four hours in the car every day just to get to downtown Atlanta where he was uh, an engineer, work all day, and then drive, like, two hours of traffic back home five days a week. That's not life. Mm. That's not life. Like, ooh, like, why do you want to do that? Like, that's, and, and I feel so blessed, like, finding, being able to do YouTube now, because I work from home now. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's given me a flexible schedule. It's given me, you know, I get to spend a lot more time outside with my dog. I get to, you know, it, it, it has given us that appreciation for just being alive, just being here to, to breathe and experience and, and be the witness. I mean, that's a big thing in the yoga world is being the witness, is being able to watch everything and take it in and observe it you know, um, without judgment and then react after you process without judgment. So, um, and so, yeah, hopefully, you know, they say whatever the devil will use for mad for bad, God will make for good. And so this whole situation with what's happened globally in the last two years, I really feel like we are after this is all over, we're going to look back and see what an important like incubation time, like, um, cocooning mm. time it was for us mm. spiritually to have that, um, kind of, What's it? Cindy says, sometimes you have to descend before you can ascend to kind of have that dark night of the soul, be, be forced to sit in solitude. Um, they wanted it for our, for our worst, but we ended up using it for the better to, to better ourselves, to find ourselves again and to, to course correct as, as humanity. Cause it can, you can look at it from one way that it's super stressful because every country in the world is going through this. So there's like nowhere to go. Like you can't just go, like there's no, there's no safe haven to go to. It's, it's every country is in this situation. So where are you going to run to? You can look at it that way in a bad way, or you can look at it like, holy crap, every country in the world is in this situation. We have no choice but to evolve as humanity. Right. We all have to go together. Yeah. And, and it's balance, isn't it, too, because you can get caught up in the volcano of it all and, 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 and sort of um, it, it's a very disruptive energy and, and it doesn't feel good. It's very disturbing, you know, when you get caught up in all the 3D and, and look at catching up on all the posts of what's happening and rah, rah, rah. But, but you have to have that balance, I think, uh, and which is hard to, to, to co-create sometimes, which is just where you are the witness, which is what you're talking about, where you're just viewing it, um, you're living your own life, you're aware of what's happening, but you're not too caught up in it so that it, it becomes everything in your life and that you're not actually living life. Right. So that, that's another um, thing that can happen, that you just get so caught up in everything that's going on that you don't actually live life. Right. David, what think, do you... Oh, sorry, carry on. Yeah, I think we've been accustomed to, um, on purpose, we've been accustomed to think that doing what you guys are talking about, leaving, leaving, you know, for work at 5 a.m. or whatever it is and coming home at 8 or even if it's 7 to 7 or whatever, that is normal. You know, we've been accustomed to that is life. And, and when, when you want to do something different, people look at you a bit funny. You know, I'm sure we've all had that experience where we've all set our lives up now I made those decisions that, that society would have frowned upon, like you mentioned, Catherine, and that, but we were doing it maybe not even necessarily from a, maybe our higher self. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it, and it's just funny how it kind of goes back to removing yourself from society because you, you kind of know what you want and you know that you didn't want any of that, whatever that was. Right. And, uh, so 
yeah, I think I think that it's it's just so funny how things work out, you know. And you can we can use this time for growth, like you mentioned, Bryce. We can. Unfortunately, there will be a certain percentage of people that won't. You know, there'll be a certain percentage of people that will just go retreat back into what it, safety or maybe even God forbid take themselves off the earth plane or whatever. Something will happen. You know, they're not ready. Their soul isn't ready. But uh, majority of people, I think, will will rise up. And for people like us who have done a lot of the work prior, it's not going to be as challenging as it would have been if we hadn't. Oh God, yes, absolutely. And, and I think that's important to hit on that because I know I've spoken a lot about that because of of you know, if anybody reads the law of one, it's it very much outlines what's happening right now. Um, and, and, and it's exciting to read it because it, it explains it, but the soul, the soul has to be ready, you know, and there are people on this, you know, the biggest illusion that we have in as humanity, as human beings, as in this humaning experience we're in is this idea of death. That's just an illusion. Mm. The only thing that goes away is the body, the soul. You can't, you can't, you can't kill a soul. You know, it's an energy. Energy can't, it can't be destroyed or created. It can only be shifted. Right. And so the law of one talks about this, that, you know, the universe, God source, you know, whatever you want to call the, the bigger picture, it's nothing but love. And it's like, mm -hmm. if you have a kindergartner student, you wouldn't then all of a sudden take your five-year-old kindergarten and stick them in university. Like that's ludicrous. You would want them to experience all those grades in between so they could grow and develop at their own pace. Or if there's a student that needs to be held back here for whatever reasons, of course you would lovingly do that for them. Right. And that's kind of what the soul's journey is too. And some people, some people's souls are not ready to me and that's okay. And you know, a lot, and I know that there's going to be a lot of, and I know people get upset when I say this, but there are going to be a lot of people that are going to have to like exit soon because they're not ready to go into the fourth density and that's okay. And we have to get rid of this like illusion that, that there's a timeline, that there's a, there's like, and that's hard for us as human beings, right? Because we live, we live in a property and nature based existence and nature has beginning, middle end. And the whole law of beginning, middle end is change. And so we're constantly fighting against this timeline, but the, but that's just the nature. That's the Shakti, the expression of what's eternal because the eternal is never changing and is always the same and is always growing eternally towards that same end light, that same end goal. We're all, it's like the Ram Dass quote. We're all just walking each other home. Literally, we're all, some of us are gonna get there before the other ones, but we're all just walking in the same direction towards the same light. But if some people aren't ready, that's okay. You know, we, if, we, if we force someone, we try to force someone to evolve with us, then that in itself is a negative quality. They have to want mm. to do it themselves. They have to be able to do, do it themselves. Because also I, I you're just assuming that um, that they want the same as us and they don't because their view on the world was completely different. So what we see as traumatic or painful is difficult. They, they don't have those struggles because they've got a different view on world um, life. And also what you were saying earlier, Bryce, about you can't just run away to another way of the country. I think that is the perfect analogy for a lot of the spiritual conundrum because so many people think when i've changed my job i'll be happy when i have kids i'll be happy when this happens when yeah. i get a nice haircut i'll be happy. get the right yeah. boyfriend get but, the right well, you know the yeah, whole yeah. point is the fact that it's happened in most places on the globe so many it's such human nature to run away from challenge and we haven't been able to run away with challenge we've been stuck here and therefore we, and look at how it is all being resolved, touch wood. We're seeing a lot of progress in a lot of different ways. But if we'd have all been able to move to Mexico or Florida or whatever, we wouldn't have resolved any of those issues, either for ourselves or for the planet. And so I think it's so great that, that we've been forced to sit there because there's so many people that, you know, that I work with and they, they always think when this happens, it will be okay. And we know, no, you've got to deal with the issue now. Otherwise you're just going to take that issue with you to the new I situation. Repeat, yeah. it, it reminds me of my kids because one of my girls, her hair was straight and she would always say, Oh, if only I had curly hair, <laughs> everything would be okay. And then my son, he went through a phase where he said, Oh, I wish I was black. I love black people. They're so cool. <laughs> and he, and he wanted, 
So I, I tied my when I was in my 20, early twenties. I I come from a family full of blonde people, just full of blonde people, blue eyed blonde people. And I dyed my hair really dark in my twenties. And I remember when I first came back from the hairdresser, my my friend was like, "Girl, you were meant to be." <laughs> And it took me forever to get like that done. So I totally get that. The grass is always oh, on the other side. But we got to learn to accept what we've been given. So no, <laughs> I, it is hysterical. <laughs> I think the other thing, too, is the point that you made, Bryce, about how we've been really indoctrinated within the Western culture to fear death and to not be able to deal with death. You know, it's become very taboo. You know, it's one of the most taboo topics. You can't speak about death because it's just not appropriate. You know? And it's like we, we've learned to really become very scared of this concept of what it is to, to, to die and to, to really disconnect from the fact that our soul is just going on a journey in, in the same way that, that, you know, we were born. It's continuing its journey. But, um, you know, the whole Western culture is actually set up or, or you could say the, the the, the cabal agenda or indoctrination program is to make us extremely um, sort of unknowing about this and to be extremely fearful of, of this process when when really we need to undo again all that programming that, that makes us not live life because we're scared of dying, because we're scared of death. And, and so that often the things that are our challenges and our obstacles, there's a deep subliminal subconscious fear of dying that creates these challenges and these difficulties. When we release that and know that we continue forever, it really liberates us on so many levels to, to live life fully. It's so hard. It's so funny because when you were saying that, I was trying not to laugh because if any of you just see me today, my neighbours, I am the laughing stock of the neighbourhood. So what happens is I've got my old dog, Star, who's 16, and um, she likes nice slow walks not very far and then I've got the younger dogs Lola and Indy who want to go miles very quickly now whenever I take Lola and Indy and they're Romanian Idris the cat wants to come so it's like a comedy show where we have to try and sneak out the house because where we live we're right in the middle of the countryside but there's a little bit of road that we need to go across so we're looking around because it's either my daughter or I that normally take them and then when Idris is not around, we're sneaking out running and then suddenly you hear this meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so today I'd got halfway down the little stretch of lane and this is relevant, by the way. <laughs> and then so I've got my dogs and they're so excited for their walk. And then I hear this meow, 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 meow. And I'm like, oh, God, Idris. Now, going back to the fear of death, for myself, I would like to say I've got no fear of death. But I was absolutely shitting myself that my cat was on the road. Yeah. Because I'm his mummy and it's my job. So then I then it's like an absolute joke. So I've got these two dogs and they're desperate pulling that way because they want to go on the walk. And then I'm scooping up Idris, who's a big boy now, and trying to run back down the road with him. And then the car's coming and I'm going, stop, stop like this. They're looking at my bad. So because I'm worried about Idris getting run over. But I'm my husband just lets him come. Oh, yeah. My husband just lets him come and touch wood. He's always quiet because my husband's like, he knows what he's mm -hmm. doing. He's out 23 hours of the day without us. <laughs> you know, you can't manage, yeah. micromanage the 10 minutes there. So what you were saying about the fear of death, I think quite a lot of people I know very good when it comes to themselves. But if they're a parent of two or four legged, yeah. then it can become a bit more challenging, I think. Oh, Sam, I'm, I'm terrified of rock. Because like I said, my dog, I mean, living in a city, we have to have him on a leash anyway. And we do take yeah. him off leash when, like in the mountains or down in Florida, he's off leash a lot. But um, like I said, he was rescued as a small puppy. So he has no clue about cars, like none mm. whatsoever. Um, and I'm terrified. All, even though he's on leash, I'm constantly like, checking to make sure he's not stepping off the sidewalk or yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's funny, you know, my, my grandfather, I've told this story on my channel before my dad's dad, who is no longer, all of my grandparents are gone now, but he had a uh, near death experience when he was in his forties. Um, he had a massive like heart attack. And while he was in the hospital, when they were doing the emergency, whatever, he floated above his body. He heard the nurses and doctors having conversation. Then he said, he walked into a light and it was a, 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 a light like you could not describe. And he says he saw Jesus come down and he, my grandfather said it was just so beautiful. He didn't want to leave. And Jesus wow. kept saying, no, Ed, you have to go back. It's not your time. And my grandfather basically threw my grandmother under the bus and was like, Marianne's got this. She, she can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, leave her with three kids behind, you know, 
But then he woke up in his hospital bed. And of course, the doctors at first thought that he had experienced something chemical from what was happening. But when he started to explain the conversation he heard while he was flatlining, then they were like, oh, something did happen. And, and I knew only knew him after that because I was born when he was in his 50s. But he would tell that story all the time to people who were on their deathbed because he literally did not fear death. After that happened, he literally had no fear of death. At his own sister's funeral a couple years before he finally died for the second time, he was giddy. He was like, Jane's fine. She's having a blast. She's I'm jealous. You know, she's fine. You know? And so it's like that he had that, mem- that that experience that like liberated him to fear. Yes. And, and he, knowing him as my grandma, I never, never knew him before, but he was so loving. He had so much integrity and he was just so like, he, he was just such a bit, I mean, he was like six, five. So he was literally a, a big dude, but, um, but you know, and, and I just think about that a lot. He's no longer with us anymore, but, and when literally like before he died, I remember going out to lunch with him a couple of years and he was eating. He was like, I think I'm going to be only here for like a couple more years. Like he was just very matter of fact about leaving again and, and understanding that, that you're literally just leaving and going to something new. You're not nothing. Ha- you're not disappearing. You're not disappearing, you know? Um, and you know, you know Safin says, I know everyone's got different opinions about who says what, but you know, Yohanna Safin's always said we've, we've got to all collectively go through a near death experience. Do you think he was talking about this in terms of going through such enforced changes that we all start really appreciating what we have got? Probably. Yeah. Good, and, good, and, good analogy. And, I think we're nearly there. I mean, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I think I, I can see a train wreck coming that's unavoidable. And, yeah. and I was wondering, that was going to be a question I had to all of you was, do you think, because he talks about the US going through it. And I was like, you, is it going to be a worldwide thing? Is it going to be a, it has to you be. know, it, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I can see, I can see it's coming and it's coming soon. It's going to be yeah. pretty soon. Yeah. But, by wait. the way, speak, speaking of Jesus, you've got all this light emanating down above you, Dave. You, you look like you've got a halo. <laughs> <laughs> actually i had a i had a question for all of you and it was something that um one of you mentioned was it it might have been bryce or i don't know you said that you know energy can't be created nor destroyed maybe it was catherine uh and and if that is the case and which i believe it is why is it you get these old souls and then you get these people these you know quote unquote not old souls is it just because because if we've all been around at the same time wouldn't we all be the same age or whatever right that's or is it just a, that's the a question for the galactics because i know it, my, that's something i've been studying on my own now just the whole concept of the 12 tribes of israel actually being galactic and that the Lyran group the lion group is the house of judah which is why the Lyrans have like a golden hue which is the whole orange man bad thing which is what they were pointing out was that their people's skin color is going to start to shift a little bit when we start to move up into our galactic heritage but i i know the Lyran group is like one of the oldest groups of humanity um and a lot of i would guess from my you know this is just my own guesswork assumption which my father used to say assume he makes an ass out of you and me so take take that with a grain of salt that most of us who are awake awake right now on this journey that are have these platforms are probably from a group like the Lyran. Um, the law of one calls it wanderers that we decided to come down to help the, the, the newer souls, whether that's created by source that have come in to, to help them pull forward. I don't know, because I think the only thing that can create that energy would be like God or source, whatever you want to call the main Mac daddy. Um, mother, I know the, the Sophia text, the gospel, of the Holy 12 calls it mother, father energy. Um, so that's a really good question, Dave. I don't know if the human mind has an answer. I don't, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I think that, I think that it's two things. I think perhaps maybe on, on one level, the people that are awake or that are considered old souls are souls that progress at a much faster rate than the other ones for one. And two, they say that we have the ability to, to be, our soul can incarnate on what is it, 140 different, yes. Uh, yes. 140 different, you know, things, sites, planets, or yeah. realities simultaneously, right? Yep. So it could just be that it could just be that the majority of the souls that incarnated on Earth or they're here right now just haven't. It's the first. It's kind of well, not the first, but you know, they haven't incarnated. You know what I mean? Like they, 
more more souls just incarnated here that weren't more evolved if that makes sense you know so the majority of souls that for some reason didn't it's it's very it's a bit of a mind it's a bit of a mind yeah. f but you know yeah. like it yeah. is. Could, could the souls have emanated from the godhead at different times uh, so that they didn't all emanate at once but right. at different stages yeah. And so that they're, 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 it could be maybe something to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, Medina, have you finished? <laughs> yes. It's a delay. It's really hard, isn't it? With Dave. I heard a really funny thing this week. And again, oh, sorry, I can't remember who said it, but it's funny. So I've heard a lot of people, spiritual people, not all, but a lot of them, that when they're talking about the old souls, it's almost like it comes across that old souls are better or more evolved than young souls. But this person was hysterical and it really resonated. It was like, well, actually, the old souls have had to come back a lot more times to learn the lessons. <laughs> so stop thinking you're above everyone else because actually you've had to keep coming back because you've been a bit slow on the uptake sort of thing. And I just thought it was brilliant because thought, actually it's like, you know, at, a, at some sort of conscious level, they we're still comparing which is better, <laughs> old or young. You know, well, you don't you don't compare an adult with a child and say, well, that child's not good enough because they're young and they don't know. You know, it's exactly. like <laughs> it's it was just really made me laugh. I thought, hallelujah! I'm glad someone's addressed it because I had heard a lot of sort of almost snobbery about being an old soul, and it just really made me giggle anyway. So the the young souls haven't got it yet either. So none of us. Well, the yeah. whole thing about the soul being able to split off. When I first found that out, I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! This is so. I, what is this?" <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the whole twin flame thing, right? Is that they're they're there? It's one soul that decided to split into two people, even though you're whole within yourself, but your soul is split. But then you start to think about how many times you've now mm. split. And how you can hmm. be you can be doing something galactically with one fraction of your soul while your other soul is like standing at the grocery store picking out bread. You know, it's like it's 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 and even with like these spirit board, you can like channel your higher self too, which is bizarre. Because let me tell you, I like my higher self a whole Thank lot. Thank you, Bryce. We've been having such fun with these. <laughs> yeah. No one no one to be true. But I've no got one a question for you on this then, Bryce. Okay, for everyone, but I have this, something keeps coming up to me. I keep getting this resistance when people talk about the, what is it, twin souls or, twin, or flames. Yeah, twin flames. Because going back to David's point about if we're all energy, if we all believe that we are all connected anyway, then mm. what is this? Is it like, oh, I'm just a bit more connected to with that it's person that because we've all soul. got each other in it soul. we're all connected but literally from what i understand it because i have really come across this with the magdalene and the christ that they're both with the christ consciousness as in twin flames and that not everybody actually has a twin flame there's only a certain amount because your soul made an agreement at some point to actually split into two and to, for whatever whatever soul contract that was whatever work that you had to do your soul actually split into two entities this sounds like a sci. It sounds like a sci-fi movie. It really does. Like a Stephen. Yeah, King. I don't. It just feels off to me. I know everyone sort of believes it, but it's like. So are we saying then that souls aren't part of the energy? No, they are. They absolutely. If are. they're part of the energy, surely all our souls are connected. They are, but it's like different. Like Taylor Moon does a really good job of explaining it because, like, you have your soul family, mm. which that has taken me a while to understand. Um, which is not your biological. That's your, your biological family is considered your karmic family. Um. Mm. And then you have soul mate. Oh, soul sisters. <laughs> well, my, I mean, my, well, the funny thing is, is my sister and I don't have any karma. We have, we're complete dharmic. Like we have no, it's like we are perfectly smooth sailing. So, but I know there are other members of my family I have karma with for sure. But, um, but then you have like soul, cause we've lived many lives, right? So you have all these soul connections, but the twin flame is literally, and, and not, not all twin flames are ever going to be together in a life or even know each other. You know, it depends on what, what the purpose was for that soul. Cause everything is about you learning and growing, right? So whatever your soul needed to do to evolve is what it did. And if it meant splitting off into two, and as you're saying, David, it could be 140 mm. that your soul decided to fraction off into. Maybe there was a, an ability for you to, to make, learn more lessons if you split and had two different experiences. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, it's wild. It's wild. The, 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 the amount of, um, 
possibilities that there are. And that's what also creates like multidimensional timelines as well. That's happening constantly. I mean, we talked about that before we started filming the fact that I, we were saying that we understand we're about to flip timelines, which um, from what I, cause we know that the, the Gregorian calendar isn't real. We know the Julian calendar isn't real. And what I keep getting from this is the, we're going back to the Atlantean calendar. Well, what is that? We don't know because we have no idea what that looked like. So what is the real date? You know, like, I don't know, you know, so there's so many different realms of possibilities when it comes to the cosmos and the galactics and, and multidimensional timelines that are happening that, you know, again, it just comes down to your own soul's contract, like what you decided to do with your guides, your before coming down again to this plane of existence. Cause it really is all just a school. It's all just a learning experience for you to learn yourself. It's like Alan Watts says, it's like the eyeball trying to see itself. You know, mm. that's what the eyeball is actually trying to see. How do you do that? You can't look in the mirror because that's a distorted view of what the eye, the eye, you know, I can see your eyeball, but can you see your own eyeball without any type of reflective gear? It's mm. the unsolvable riddle, right? This all makes me laugh so much because you know how we've all said we can't wait to watch the real movie when it's over. Well, I could, when you were just saying that, Bryce, I was thinking, can you imagine the hysterical conversations that when our soul, when, when we pass over from this life and our soul goes up to and um, re-meets the, the guides that have helped you choose what you came back, can you imagine, what the hell did you make me go and do that for? Why did I have agreed? Why did you persuade me to do that? It just makes me laugh. I, I bet there's some really interesting discussions that the go law on. One says that, that sometimes the soul, when the soul is is getting to ready to take a life, because one life on this earth plane is so fast in spirit world that we're trying to get like everything in. We're like, give me a bad breakup here. Give me a divorce here. <laughs> give me, like, we're trying to get everything in. Our guides are like, whoa, tiger. Like, and then we get here, we're like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. You know, because it's so overwhelming. But like bingo, you know, you're desperately trying to take them off as quick as possible. But sometimes you might be better just slowing down. <laughs> Pick one of two. Do you want the bad divorce or do you want the car accident? Pick one of two. Oh, you know, sometimes we get like seven divorces. Exactly. In a lifetime. Like, that soul was an eager beaver, an overachiever. Like, <laughs> it all. Let's just, let's just get through this. You know? And, and so, I know some yeah. amazing women who've had many, many multiple marriages and they actually seem to know a lot more than some of the other ones so you know there's no judgment there <laughs> isn't it funny though isn't it funny how people uh sometimes they go through a divorce or multiple and they keep marrying the same person yeah right? so they keep the having these they're divorces they're not learning the lesson because, yeah. because they're not learning the lesson right so when they get to the end if they never if they get to the end of their life and they they go up there and they they go and you know, review and, and see what happened. They go, well, I, I didn't even learn that lesson. I have to go and do it all again, you know, and, <laughs> and have another seven divorces. I think on the whole, we're, we're spiralling upwards, you know. We're, we're in the process of, of evolving and ascending. So it's a continual process of going up. And as we go up in that spiral, we're magnetising to us the things that we need for our experience in order to do that. And so I think if you think of it as a way of um, everything that comes to you, you're magnetising to you in order for that process to spiral upwards. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Cats, cats. Come, cats, come to me. <laughs> oh, there's many. You know, when they take the piss about these old ladies who live with lots of cats, well, I don't see anything wrong with that. I have got humans in my life too, but what, what could possibly be wrong with that? I don't get it. So obviously I'd love to see what that means <laughs> about what happened in my last life. Oh, well, you can tell we're all on good form because we do have a laugh. I mean, I think there's been a huge shift. If you look back on perhaps what we were where we were at vibrationally when we first started doing roundtables and where we are now, I think it shows a huge shift in um, where where we're at and how good things are. Yeah. Laughter is the best medicine. It really is. And that's one thing that's the highest level of spirituality is when you can actually laugh at yourself. When you don't take yourself that seriously where you can't laugh at yourself and laugh at your situation sometimes. And so laughter, I mean, Catherine, you know, I, my weekly videos with Taylor and Stephanie, we, I didn't think we were going to release that video. We ended up just losing it in the middle of a reading and, <laughs> you know, and it just is what it is. It's, it's laughter is the best medicine. So it does change the vibration for sure. Mm. Any final words from you, David? I would just like to say that, uh, 
I, I think that there are many animals that are smarter than humans on, on many levels. <laughs> uh, just to go back to something that was, we spoke about before, but I never got to have a chance to say that, but I, I do think that animals a lot. In, in, <laughs> you see animals do so many crazy things, and it's like some humans, you know, you know I'm not going to go into it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But, uh, in, terms of, in, terms of parting, <laughs> in terms of parting words, <laughs> Oh my God, I don't know, I don't know where to begin. There's just so much happening and it just like really, I think, center yourself and, and really, I don't know, I, I always say this, do the things that you want to do in life because it's not, you never, like tomorrow's never promised, is it? So mm. it, we kind of, you know, you'd be surprised at what you can get done if you just put your mind to it. I know there's a lot of distraction out there. I'm distracted all the time because of the stuff that's happening. In the last two years, I've been more distracted uh, than ever uh, for obvious reasons. But at, at the same time, I've also achieved more than, I've ever, than I ever have, you know, in that, in that two years before, you know, in that two years as well. So you can do a lot if you just really kind of put your mind to it. And imagine what will happen once, once this all is gone, at, you know, and or we, we move to a different, uh, a different uh, part of it, let's just say. Um, imagine how productive you'll be then. Mm. I, I think it's just about following your heart and following your truth and um, then, then you can't really go wrong. And, 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 you know, if those truckers and those people joining in those convoys, if that's in their heart and that's their truth, then, you know, all power and, and so much, um, you know, love and support and blessings to you all, everyone that's doing that. And just for everyone that's following their, their truth and their, and their heart, you know, I think that's a brilliant example that you can give the world at the moment. So, Oh, yeah, here, here. What's about you, Bryce? Just for everybody watching, you are enough, you are loved, you are special. And if there is something in your life that is the pattern that you recognize in your life, whether it's a work, job, a relationship, compliance, whatever, you have the power to change that because you are a powerful being. And laugh, just laugh. Laugh and laugh. Thank you so much, all of you. That is such fun as always. Hopefully we'll be back in two weeks time, everyone, if you're all right for two weeks time. Yeah. Well done, David. You you do it well done. A big pat. Hopefully, on the hopefully daylight savings will kick in in a few. Well, it's going to be a while, isn't it, for you? And then it will be an hour later for me. Yeah, I, just, I will say because I do Australia a lot. In this, our summertime, your winter time, are we're closer together in time. So yeah. yeah, when I was living in Melbourne, there was only about a because it was such a big time difference. But with uh with uh the, the west coast of the US or the you know, North America. It was such an enormous time difference, but if you really look at it, it was only like a five hour time difference because it was a 19 hour time difference. But uh, yeah. 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 And this goes on to another discussion that we're going to have to have at some stage because this fits into the, oh, we all really as far are away. We are, we are, we are, yeah. <laughs> is it really, is it all an illusion? But we'll have to leave that for next time. Thank you so much, everyone. And to everyone who's listening, everyone's links, because it will be on all our channels. So all of our links will be below the videos as normal. And we really, really appreciate you taking the time to listen, join in and share your energy with us. So thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.